All right, welcome back, guys. So, let me get my suit on here. And I'm going to go show you what we got done in the prep stream. I'd originally thought about doing a long pipeline all the way over the factory. And then I remembered that going that far, I probably should use the miniature nether portal. So that's what we ended up with and I went down in the gas hole we have down here and there's like 13 or so springs down there so we've got all kinds of natural gas we're going to be good for natural gas for quite a while. So we're going to slowly turn the factory over to running off of natural gas. So I'll take you over here first. And here is our natural gas. So it's above us right now. And these right here are our fluid springs. Each one of these creates natural gas randomly. And like I said, we've got about 13 of them around here. I need to get the torches out of here. Torches do not light natural gas on fire. You can light natural gas on fire, but it takes an actual open flame, not a torch. But what we have going on right now is just our drum with the drain on the front. And that is getting piped in. This drum is set to will fill vertical adjacent tanks depending on gravity and state of matter. And it is filling this pipe with natural gas, which is going into here. And then on the other side. All right, so now here we are in the nether. We come down this walkway, and over here we have this one, which it, if I magnifying glass it, tells me it's connected to negative 88, 264 at Y5. That's the one at bedrock. And the pipe was coming in from the top, so now this is going through the bottom, because they go through the portal. Then it runs over here and goes up into this one, which it is connected to negative 173, 160 at Y66. So now we get back to the overworld. All right, and now we are back here at the factory and we have this one, which is the one that we had that said it was connected to 173 and if you look at my map coordinates up there that's where we're at so that is filling this with our natural gas so now we can just take our natural gas out of here and run it into the factory now another thing I can do that um, XAR likes to do is make a big natural chasm down there to collect natural gas and then put the actual drain up at the very top of it if you guys watched us do the uh, GT6U server you'll see where we had a big pyramid looking building that was filling up with natural gas from one down below but Today, we are going to make our first gas burning box. So, we have that. And now, our other project for today is we are going to make a squeezer. So, a squeezer uses KU to squeeze things. And we need this recipe. So we have 
that. We already have our casing. We need a rod. We need two triple ingots, or two triple plates, and our wrench. And that makes our squeezer. I went ahead and made the engine and the boiler ahead of time because we have already gone over how to make those when we made the compressor and when we made the crusher. So I went ahead and ran the water line this far. So this is our distilled water line right here. And we have a rebuilt tank right there. This is going to be for our latex. So we're going to kind of line this up with that. We just got to make sure that we are far enough away that we're not going to burn it. So we need this needs to be five blocks back. So one, two, three, four. Five burning box can be right there, and then we will need our tank. And the squeezer needs its energy in from the top, so we're actually going to put this this way, and the power is going in from the top, the items will go in. From this side out from that side and then the fluid will come out the bottom and we've I've been making a bunch of rubber so we're actually using rubber hoses now and we are going to connect this over and Let's go ahead and this we will connect that right there. Oh, hold on a minute. Tank isn't formed yet. I need to turn the valve down. Now the tank is formed. So now this will connect. There we go. That takes care of that. Now we just need to get our engine on here. It's going to go right there. Turn that direction. And now we're going to need three pipes to get up and over the top of that. We're also going to have to run our water line down there. And at this point, we're not going to worry about the return. This isn't going to be that much. Uh, let's get... Uh, let's see, we're doing... 120... How much are we doing with this? Uh, steel... Oh, if I could hit the right button. Uh, I hate that I can't look it up like that. Okay. Um, I don't need the burning box. I need the boiler. Alright. Steel boiler. We are going to be making 64 steam. So copper fluid pipes are going to be fine. So let me grab three pieces of copper and we'll get that part done. Actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, I made a whole bunch of invar pipes. Let's go ahead and just use those. Because we have got all kinds of iron. And hey, I've actually got three pipes right here. But we can use these instead. Grab a stack of those, anyways. 
because we had two prep streams. One was pretty much prepping this gas stuff. The other one was a whole bunch of digging black sand, which you can see we have all the iron. <laughs> we have butt tons of iron from all the black sand we got in and got processed. It took me about a day to get all of that centrifuged. All right, and I'm going to make a tutorial for the mini nether portals. So if you don't completely understand how they work, I will put a little card up in the corner for you guys to click on that will give you a little bit uh, better explanation of how they work. But it's pretty much the same as uh, connecting regular nether portals. You just divide your over world by eight. Alright, so that's that. Now... We need to get our two fluids in here. So let's dig down here and dig over here to the water line. All right, where is this water line? There it is. All right, so we're just going to run this right along here. Uh, is that connected? Yes. All right, and we're going to take this one up right here. It's going to connect right there. Out of here real quick. And there we go. And now we have distilled water in there. And now on this side, uh, we'll do this here. So for this, I put the nozzle on the side. And so we can keep everything straight. I'm going to use Invar pipes for the natural gas. And we're going to take it down and put it on this line here. So this straight down here. And over this way. And it will come up and connect right there. Let me go in that dirt. Now down, connect that, and connect that, and we are good to go. We now have natural gas in there. All right, and we can fix our floor. And we can fix our wall. There we go. Everything looks all nice and neat. I will make some plates to make that look a little bit better back there later. So now we need to get a chest on here. If we look at the Sticky resin. In the squeezer. 
It is 16 GU, which is what we're going to be using. And it gives us one unit of latex with no output. So, we can get a bite to eat here. Hunger Man. Now we can eat a third one. Alright, so now we just need to get a box. And we need to get some sticky resin. Let's come out here to our trees, collect up all the resin, and let's go get us a chest, put on there to hold this. Like I said, there is no output, so we don't need to worry about an output chest. Um, don't I have a chest over here? Yeah, there we go. Thought I did. And I've only got one stack of resin in there. We're going to leave that in there. That way I have some for if I need to make sticky pistons. So we're going to put that right there. And we'll put these in here. And I forgot a match. Let me go grab a match. Although I haven't been using matches. I've been using the uh, Appetite Flint and Tinders. Just because I've got a whole bunch of Appetite and a whole bunch of Flint. We'll make one of these, and we'll light this bad boy up. And we will make us some latex. And I do believe next time we are going to work on making a shutoff for this. You gotta love that blue flame. I think next time we're gonna work on getting a shutoff made for this. Um, that will detect if there's any, if the uh, tank is full. And it'll run a shutoff over here. And shut this off. Probably try to do an item detector. See if we can detect if there's any items inside here. And if not, then it'll also shut it off. See if we can get that around. But basically what we're doing is this thing is going to make our latex faster than what our coagulator can handle. So we're going to take another pipe and we're going to bring it in probably right here. We're just going to connect this hose up right here and we will have it come out, come in here and connect to our coagulator that's making our rubber. So now we'll be able to do a whole lot more at one time. So we'll do this. Bring this up and let's go look at the coagulator while this thing gets temperature. Might as well grab it while we're there. I ought to put another door on this place, which I'll probably put one in like right there. So coagulator is empty. Go ahead and grab that and I should have plenty of room so let's go ahead and grab that as well I'm not going to be able to put this right next to the burning box so I'll probably put I'm not even sure where I'm going to put it right now to be honest all 
All right, so we're up to pressure, or we're up to heat. Now we're just getting the pressure up. And I got to put this. <laughs> you know what we can do, actually? Let's take these out of here. And let's just put this over here on this side. So the coagulator can only go in through the bottom or the left. We can put that right there. Put the rubber in it. We can put the coagulator there. And then it can go in through the left. So it should go in just like that. That should work. Because as long as it's being piped in, it'll work. Now we just gotta wait on this thing to get enough power to turn on. Which we may have an issue with that because we're trying to run at the exact amount it needs. And we may have too big a pipe. Because there is a problem because of the sloshing. If you have too many pipes, it'll even out the amount of fluid across the pipe. And so the engine may not get enough to make enough to make the machine run. And it doesn't tell me what the actual output is of the engine so we just got to wait and see if it actually turns on here and if it doesn't then we will have to change it out to the copper pipes which will most definitely work let's go ahead and go grab those copper pipes because these are twice as big as what they need to be so that gives each pipe twice as much room for the steam to not be pressurized. Because see, these can hold, can move 200. These can move 100. Let's go see. If it hasn't started, we're going to switch out. Oh, there we go. It started. All right. We don't have to switch it out. I just got impatient. All right. So now it's squeezing. And it's making us latex. And if we look outside. We should have latex coming into our coagulator. And making us rubber. And we probably have some already building up in the tank. So absolutely perfect. Now with as fast as that is going to run, we could actually set up a second one of these over here, which I may end up doing right now. We don't need quite that much rubber to worry about it. Um, but there is that option with this since there's so much latex that's going to be made compared to the time that the coagulator takes there we go we now have a nice gas powered rubber setup like i said i think we're going to work on a little bit of uh automatic shutoffs for this next time and probably start moving some things over from the other building like the lathe and the compressor we're going to move over here and set them up on gas and i may even run uh some gas over there so we are not dependent on creosote and uh charcoal or cocoa so much so Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to hit them buttons and do them things. And I'll see you guys 
next time. Mm.